Welcome back, foodie friends, and welcome to all our new subscribers who's decided to join us on this crazy journey through weird cookbooks and lots of historical goodies. We're really glad to have you here. And this month is going to be so much fun because, of course, we're delving into hippie lifestyle and what that meant to be cooking on a commune. So what did their food look like in the late 60s and the early 70s? And we're also gonna be looking into some communes that are still around, uh, including some that are actually in my home state. So that's gonna be a lot of fun too. But the first cookbook we're gonna look at, The Commune Cookbook by Crescent Dragon Wagon. This one was written in 1972, and just three years prior to that, this author moved in with her husband to a commune in New York City and decided to try the hippie lifestyle and see how they could come along. And the cookbook, I will say this for it, is absolutely, it's a trip. Now the recipe we're gonna try is carob brownies, which I'm excited for and I picked it for a specific reason because I can't have chocolate. A lot of people can't have chocolate. So if you want a brownie alternative, you kinda gotta go with carob. I'm really excited to try this one as it's one of her personal recipes that she developed while living at the commune. But I'm also a little worried because some of her recipes, um, some of them don't have the greatest, or maybe I should say don't exactly elaborate on the instructions. So for me, this recipe could go either way. Um, there's also some incoherencies in the book, which is something I will be explaining why later. Um, but I will say this, it was a fascinating read from cover to cover. If you want a cookbook that starts out talking about how you should be a hippie, but then ends in teaching you how you should steal and why you should steal everything you can, even if you don't actually want the object, then this is gonna be a cookbook that you are going to want to add to your collection. So let's go ahead. I will read to you some of the more um, odd passages I found in this cookbook while we're making the brownies and then we'll come back together taste it and we'll go into a little bit more detail so let's go ahead and get started and cook us up some brownies and now on to the voiceover to make your carob brownies go ahead and melt your butter first place in a bowl and you're going to stir in your carob powder raw sugar one to two eggs i used to your whole wheat flour, wheat germ, your nuts, I use pecans, vanilla, and salt. Then you'll pour in a small pan and place in a 325 degree oven for about 30 minutes. And now for some of the more interesting things I found in this cookbook. Now here's an interesting little conversation that I found right after the recipe for Ronnie's chicken baked in sour cream. Quote, the Dianes and I are sitting around the kitchen, again late at night, stoned, one summer evening, discussing the high incidence of strange bugs in the kitchen late at night. Big Diane, it's funny, there aren't many in my room. Are there in yours, Crescent? I give this careful thought and recall that yesterday when I cleaned up, the floor under the big window fan was littered with dead bugs. Me. Well, most of them get killed coming in through the fan." Unquote. And then it immediately jumps into a recipe for Jerry Ray's chicken and cream sauce. She also has a chapter devoted to what to do with food besides eat it. First off, she says not to throw away your chicken or turkey legs. These can be cleaned and actually turned into a necklace. You can also do these with dried beans, and she says they're all, quote, really pretty and most organic looking. Squash and pumpkin seeds also make really nice beads. And this one might be really nice, a honey egg facial. So mix together one egg and a teaspoon of honey, 
Spread that on your face, let it dry about five to 10 minutes. Wash it off with warm and then cold water. And now she also advocates a recipe for Adele Davis's Wonder Milk, which will help any kind of sickness. It has eggs, lecithin, vegetable oil, calcium lactate, yogurt, milk, nutritional yeast, powdered milk, liver powder, soy flour, and raw wheat germ. Add it to three cups of milk and store it in your refrigerator. She says, although it's fantastically healthy, it should be obvious to even the most hardy that it's not the most delicious thing in the world. If you're brave though and truly desire health, you will drink it. A third to a half a cup at and between each meal. This will help any kind of sickness, even colds. And that is why I absolutely love collecting and looking through these old cookbooks. Because you never know what kind of fascinating, interesting, entertaining, and even bizarre things you'll find in between the pages. Okay, we got them done. They smell good. They do. Yeah, so let's just dig in. Okay, I'm going to say I would make these again. I love them. I, I mean, I... I do, too. Like, yeah. I was... I was kind of scared because, I mean, like, it is dense, which you expect, like, a brownie to be anyways. Right, right. So that's right. not that big a deal. But it actually, like, once you bite into it, it's not as dense as it looked. I don't think. Ex that, yeah, that's Does a that good point. Does that make sense? Like, it's like... I thought so, too. It's more airy than you expect it to be. Yeah. And it has, like, a... It's sweet, but it's not, like, overly sweet. Like no, a typical it's not brownie. hurt your teeth. Sweet. It, it's reminiscent, I think, to me, in a way of like the peanut butter cookies, where it's like, it's a. It's oh a wait, snack. are you talking about Isabel's peanut butter yes. cookies? Okay, yeah. It, it's a snack that I wouldn't feel horrible for snacking on. Yeah, because this is whole wheat flour. Yeah. Wheat germ. Now you can argue, yes, there is sugar in it. Now carob, um, carob is usually typically safe for diabetics. Okay. Because uh, unlike chocolate, um, it's not going to have such a yeah, yeah yeah. However, you have to still be careful with what you pair the right. carob with. And this probably does have sugar too much. Oh, sugar it's got it. yeah, yeah it's, it's got sugar in yeah. it. So if you are diabetic and you're like woohoo carob, you gotta still you can substitute. Yeah, you you'd have to work on this. Sugar. Maybe yeah. some stevia. Yeah. You know, you can work with this. Re this is a recipe you could work with substitution. Right. and figure something out right i think if you did use stevia i think you know that would work with this so i wow it's this really, is it's and this is awesome good. for yeah. me because like i said i can't have a you know chocolate right this is perfect for me i can still have a brownie and i really like it so i would heavily like recommend these even if you can eat chocolate even if you just absolutely love chocolate but if you're still kind of wanting to sneak in some whole wheat recipes and stuff like that. Extra fiber. Yeah, yeah. give this a try. I think you're really going to like it. Now, as for the cookbook, I I don't know what to... I, I really almost <laughs> don't know what to recommend um, because... It depends on the person. It does. And I'm going to caveat. Um, now, bear in mind, the views in this cookbook do not reflect the author now. Because she's, she's older, yeah. you know. I mean, I, the views I had when I was 19 don't reflect my views now Exactly. Either, so. <laughs> you know, keep in mind, she got married and moved into this commune at 16. Now, I was still very much childish <laughs> at 16, so there's no way I would have had like the emotional maturity uh, to pull that off. And then she wrote a book during those yeah. years, and she published this when she was 19. Yeah. So keep in mind that if you do decide to pick up this cookbook, um, I will say 
If you are a person that does not like to find like random swearing um, yeah. in your books, then you're not, you know, you're not going to like this. No. <laughs> if you don't, if you don't like. If you're easily offended by like. Well, I mean, there's a lot of mention of um, pot smoking. Yeah. Uh, growing yeah. it. Yeah. You know, cutting it down and being like, this was the best I ever had. <laughs> So it's kind of funny, yeah. but I mean, just coming from the time period that Although you that know this was written is in. also a great selling point for some people too. So no. I mean, if, if you, yeah, it could be, but yeah. you know, if also if you do not like, she does have the chapter in there that advocates, you know, stealing yeah. whatever you can. Now in her mind, and she does say on her website that she was a very naive revolutionary yeah. at sixteen. Very naive. Oh, who is it naive at 16? No. <laughs> um, yeah, but she thought and states in here that that we need to topple our corporate overlords. And one way to do that is to just go in there and steal whatever you want. Even if you don't need it, just like just steal it and just try to, you know, topple corporations <laughs> from, you know, just the massive amounts yeah. of money you cause them by. So... Stick it to the man. Yeah, st yeah. I mean, she's, she's sticking it to the man. I mean, it's like she. I mean, she practiced what yeah. she preached. She I even guess. gives you instructions on how to yes. do that. So like, yeah. Oh, and who not to steal yeah. by too? Yeah. Um, you know, she was very adamant about do not steal from your local mom and pop yeah. stores. She's um, a very ethical thing. She no. is. It's very ethical. Said, At least um, in her own mind. And, yeah, in her own mind. <laughs> um, so. With that in mind, if, if you don't like stuff like that, you're not going to like this cookbook. Mm -mm. Now, um, on the flip side of that, you know, just realize, I mean, it kind of surprised me too. I was reading it yeah. and I was like, wow, I mean, this is the most bizarre cookbook I've ever I think I've if you're the kind of person read. that can read it in the context that it's in. Right. And not necessarily accept every idea that it advocates for. Yes. But enjoy it for the the historical snapshot that it yeah. provides you know what i mean yes of the mind inside the person but you also get some pretty good recipes with yeah, it. yeah i mean the, the recipes do oh now here's another caveat too you know there is a kind of misconception now that every hippie in the 60s and 70s living in communes were vegans or vegetarians mm. This is not. It's got a lot of meat dishes in it. So don't buy this cookbook if you're like, oh, I'm going to get some really cool vegetarian hippie food. You're not going to. There's a few Seems, vegetarian yeah. dishes, but Something not like a... Could, yeah, but it's yeah. not enough to pick up just for a vegetarian cookbook. Right. She has a whole chapter dedicated in here to just organ meat. So, uh, and that's, I mean, all kinds of different <laughs> organs, you know, so... Uh, so if you don't like that, you're not going to like right. this. But I am also going to say that you it's a cookbook where you get a snapshot of the whole 60s and 70s like kind of naiveness yeah. in a way of like the, the youth movement in which, you know, they were really we are going to change the world, you know, and this is how we're going to do it. Um, so you are getting a historical snapshot through this book. Right. Um, so there are things you will enjoy about it. Yeah. Um, it's a, I'll tell you, it's a fun read. <laughs> I kind of enjoyed that just because it was different from any other cookbook so far yeah. that we've had on this channel. Um, but just, you know, keep in mind what I said. If some of those other things might be bothering to you, then it's, you know, you, you yeah, you're not going to yeah. like it. Um, but if you just want like a bizarre fun read with some great um, brownies, yeah. you know, then this is something you might yeah. want to pick up for like a little, you know, trip down 70s, you know, nostalgia to see like what were people thinking back then? What was the youth of America doing? <laughs> in communes in the 60s and 70s you're gonna get a snapshot yeah. of it and it, it was fun to see so yeah okay so we're, we'll just That's leave it. it at that we'll let you guys be the judge on whether you might want to pick this yeah. cookbook up or not but we enjoyed it yeah
Yeah, but we enjoyed it. So, you know, I found it for a couple dollars on eBay. I'm not upset that no, I bought it. No. You know, this is really good. Yeah. At least try these. Yeah, at very least try these. Yeah. So, there you go. Another really good, surprising recipe that we are going to keep in our personal repertoire and make several times again. And stay tuned for next week because we're going to continue on our trek through Commune America. And this one, I'm really excited to try because it was founded in Tennessee and it's still going. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that, ah, oh, if we could just go there, <laughs> I would love it. So It's a little far. It, it, it's a little sometimes. far, but we might take a field trip. It'd be really fun. <laughs> so thank you for watching this week and hope you stay tuned for next week because next week, that particular commune is vegetarian and they had their own farm and they called it the farm. <laughs> so, very creative, yeah. So stay tuned for that. We'll see you next time. Bye. And if you like historical cooking and unusual cookbooks, here's two more videos you might enjoy. And make sure to like and subscribe for more foodie adventures.